And the healing powers of the barefoot and natural horse. Okay, we're just going to start with a review of the parts of the foot, and I'm sure everybody is familiar with the parts of the foot. Parts that we're concerned about here is the heel area, which is back at the widest part of the frog, and large bulbs. So the big heel area is right here that we're going to be talking about. The main function of the foot is to assist the heart in pumping blood, of course, to run from potential danger, so traction, um, protection from outside forces, rocks, sticks, whatever, temperature regulation. It's not something we think about a lot, but um, a horse can stand with a properly functioning foot, can stand on, on the snow and not freeze his foot, and, and you know, can stand on, on hot sand and cool the sand so that it's, it's regulating temperature all the time. Shock absorption and distribution of the forces of shock and feel an assessment of the earth. And uh, they can actually feel whatever kind of footing that they're on and, and adjust to it, like mud or rocks or uh, sand, pavement, whatever, and it just adjust their, their movement to accommodate whatever they're standing on, compared to um, a, a shod horse who may really doesn't feel the earth so much and just kind of plows through everything and can end up bruising himself or hurting himself because of the lack of sensation. Okay, and the foot of course expands and contracts. When it hits the ground, it's expanding, and when it's in the air, it's contracting. So what does a healthy foot look like? What does it how does it function? We just went over that. What does it look like and how can I recognize a healthy functioning foot? So in looking at a healthy functioning bare foot, it's a simple triangle shape. Okay, so from the hairline, the ground surface and the frontal wall, it's just a simple triangle. The hairline you want to view from a ground surface and it should be at approximately a 30 degree angle to the ground and it should be straight, no big bumps or lumps in that hairline. And the heel is back and wide. So this is what it might look like in a simple triangle shape and what it might look like on a live foot. And they're pretty much similar right across the board, um, all different sizes of, of, of horses, from ponies to draft horses will have a naturally functioning foot that is in the triangle shape. This is a comparison of the triangle shape versus the box sort of foot that we've been accustomed to see. Um, high heels takes the coffin bone and points it to the ground more, and, and all this part is full of, of harder tissue, the heels and the bars. And you can just see the, the different shapes of the box. And it can be, it doesn't necessarily mean they have to be wearing shoes to have this shape, because they can have that shape when they're in, uh, if they're born and raised in a stall, that they don't get the movement that they need, and or if they're trimmed sort of incorrectly throughout their life, they can develop this really tall tubular type foot rather than a triangle shape. A heel first landing is what we want to see on any horse, any time. Any mammal, for that matter, should land with their heel, as does the elephant and the rhino. Um, the heel involves obviously the back part of the foot, the soft tissue that's in the back part of the foot. We want to see them landing on their heels. If you look at horses, a, a large majority of horses are landing, stubbing their toes into the ground, toe heel, toe heel, toe heel, toe heel. You can see the dirt kick up in front of them, and if you really watch, you can see the front of the, the shoe hit first, <laughs> and we want to see them really extend and reach with and land with the heel first. So, viewed from below, I uh, used to see a uniform concavity, and we have a, some people have a hard time seeing or understanding what concavity is. Concavity is simply a shallow dome, not a big <coughs> sort of arch in the foot, but just a shallow dome, and it's uniform right across the foot. It matches and mirrors the coffin bone underneath. If you look at the coffin bone from underneath, you can just see a shallow dome or a shallow arch in that. So if the wall is really tall and the sole is way up inside the foot, that's not concavity, that's just a really long foot. 
so that this uniform concavity, when hitting the ground through motion, should draw itself fairly flat upon impact. So it, it goes to support and help support the structures above it. Okay, the white line is the connection between the wall and the sole. And it's found all the way around the hook. You can also refer to it as the sole line because it's sometimes easier to pick up. White lines are not white. They're translucent in color. And it's not really a line like a pencil thickness line, but more of a thicker belt marker type of a tip uh, thickness. It should show no black or separation at all. Sometimes you see a horse that has a stretched white line, okay, and if it's just stretched, because it's such an elastic structure, if it's just stretching, you can actually trim the part that's causing it to stretch, which is usually a flare or overgrown on one side, and it'll absolutely recoil just overnight and, and snap itself back together. It's how quickly things adjust and, it's, and it uh, recoils itself. So the bars have a white line too. Okay, the bars should end at approximately halfway of the jaw, and then you can tell uh, a healthy foot, this bar back here is stabilizing, the bar triangle is stabilizing the back of the foot, and that whole area is the heel. So the bar should end at approximately halfway of the frog. And again, another picture showing a winter foot with these bars that are short and ending at approximately halfway of the, of the frog healthy bars protrude slightly above the sole <coughs> and are well defined. You can definitely see the, the white on the water line, the inner pigment of the wall, and end at about halfway of the frog. Hind feet have a different concavity than the fronts. They tend to have a little more concavity than the fronts. They're also a different shape. Front feet are very round. Hind feet are more of a spade shape and built for running, leaving, fleeing. So the inside of the hind foot is more narrower than the outside, and it has more concavity here than on the outside. The toe callus remains the same in both the front and the hind feet. It's an area that when you're naturally trimming or trimming for a natural foot shape, you don't want to touch there. And ironically, it's the first place that conventional trimming will go and take that the toe callus and the toe height off. So it's kind of polar opposite. What we're doing here is just leaving the horse callus up right here and it's right underneath the perimeter of the coffin bone so that it gives them a protective callus, builds up over time and they can absolutely walk over any, any surface, any ground surface at all, including rocks and climbing hills and sand and it doesn't get worn down, it responds to the stimulus that it's given and just keeps on growing, growing and wearing. A healthy functioning foot contains a wonderful natural <coughs> arch, just as we talked about, and the arch is more predominant in the hind feet than the front, again, and it's the same with the coffin bones. It, there's an arch in the coffin bone. So the <coughs> outer foot is just mirror, mirroring what the inner foot would be looking like. So here's the difference. This is the same horse, front foot, back foot. Okay, what a difference in shape. The front foot, they're both winter feet. This one's a little overgrown, but still very healthy. And a, a tight connection of, of white line, no black in there anywhere. Uh, bars that are just above the sole and ending at about halfway at the frog. Um, so the front feet are very, very round in shape, and the hind feet more of a spade shape. You can see a lot of times horses have four feet that look the same. They kind of look across between the front foot and the back foot, just kind of meshed into one. And because they're so um, adaptable, you can actually shape them into any shape that you want because they're so moldable and adaptable and over time will just adjust. So we want to keep the healthy shape in mind. This is the same horse, same feet in summer compared to winter. Okay, so in winter time we have a lot more of the seasonal changes that happen. We have a lot more moisture in the winter time um, with the snow and the springtime with mud and whatever. So this white line gets really thick and full of water. It doesn't make the foot less 
uh, resilient to anything. It's still equally as strong. It just has more moisture than in the summertime when it's a, a little more dehydrated and calluses up even stronger and harder because of the surfaces that it's working on. So it's the same, same foot, same horse. Okay, so a view of a healthy foot from behind. We see wide, low heels, well-shaped cartilage. And this <coughs> picture is just showing the independent movement, independent movement of the bulbs. Okay, so if a horse is walking and he ends up, or he's running, and he ends up stepping on that rock, he doesn't, he, he can feel it register, adjust that he doesn't have to fully place his weight on whatever thing is under him, whether it be glass, rocks, sharp objects, or whatever, and just adjust and take it on the other side of the foot. So the independent movement of the bulbs is important. Of course, that's something that's lost when you put a shoe on. It's, it's something that's taken away. Um, the product of a healthy functioning foot is a self-cleaning. These are just little snow divots and, and uh, dirt divots that are popped right out of the foot, so nothing really gets jammed up inside or you don't get manure and urine and, and everything jammed up inside the foot that you have to pick out. It, it actually has enough movement that it's popping these divots out by itself and therefore you don't tend to get any rotting taking place at the bottom of the foot. Okay, and the footprints, um, you can see that the whole entire frog and bulbs are in contact with the earth as well as the outer wall and you can see the concavity compared to these, this horse is just walking on hoof wall. Hoof wall only is not supposed to support the whole entire uh, weight of the horse, just that little wall. So the, the whole entire foot comes into play for supporting weight. Mm -hmm.